Hey, so this is a new kind of list, not your favorite films, but the films that were most significant to you in your life. This was started by a guy named John D. Barker and continued by Mikola, and both of the links to their videos will be in the down there. I thought I'd take a crack at it myself, so in way, way, way too many words, here are the five most significant films to my life. Number one. Wag the Dog. This is a political satire, but it also kind of pokes fun at the ridiculousness of Hollywood big-budget features. In it, a fictional U.S. president is running for re-election, but he has a sex scandal mucking up his chances of winning. To combat this, a spin doctor, played by Robert De Niro, and a ridiculous Hollywood producer, played by Dustin Hoffman, create a fake war in a random country to take everyone's mind off of the sex scandal and on to the amazing way that this president is handling the war. I honestly don't remember that much about this movie except basically what it was about, but I watched it in high school and I will just say that I was really, really oblivious to everything in high school. Watching this movie was really the first time I thought about the fact that not everything you see is what it seems, and that it's really easy for people in power to come up with really ridiculous ways to make themselves look good, even if it means lying to an entire country. Maybe the movie made me a little bit of a cynic, but I do still think about it occasionally whenever I see politicians do stupid things to make themselves look good. Number two, Capote. Capote is a biographical film about Truman Capote, obviously, played by Philip Seymour Hoffman, and his process in writing his book In Cold Blood. In Cold Blood was a non-fiction novel about a random, horrific, and completely true murder that took place in Kansas in 1959. Capote decided to write this book after he caught a glimpse of a short newspaper article in the New York Times about this incident, and the more he did research into it, the more he became entrenched in these people's lives, to the point that after he wrote it, he never wrote another book again because of the emotional toll it took on him being so involved. I had read the book in high school, and it scared the living daylights out of me. You have to understand, the victims were members of this kind, upstanding, successful farm family who were basically chosen at random by these two recently released robbers. It wasn't even supposed to be a murder, but one of the robbers went berserk and just shot them all with a shotgun. It was the kind of thing that literally could happen to anyone, and that terrified me and my very overactive imagination. So anyway, one night I was alone and decided I wanted to watch a movie, so I picked Capote because I had been meaning to watch it for a really, really long time. Dumbest idea ever. I had completely forgotten how much the book had terrified me, and seeing all of these things played out in such vivid images was not a good way to remember that. <laughs> I think I can honestly say that I have never been more scared in my entire life. It sounds a little bit ridiculous, but just work with me here. I was alone in the middle of the night with images of a loving family having their heads blown off, compounding my already irrational fear of the dark while I tried to sleep. It took me forever to fall asleep, and then when I finally did, I woke up at 3am and had to pee. So my method of monster avoidance has always been, it's probably there, but as long as I don't look at it, nothing will happen to me. So I went to the bathroom fully convinced that there was a man with a shotgun sitting at my kitchen table waiting to slaughter me if I looked at him. It wasn't a good night. But despite all of that, Capote was a fantastic film, not least because Philip Seymour Hoffman was absolutely a genius. I actually would like to watch the movie again. Just in daylight with other people. Number three, Cave of Forgotten Dreams. This is a documentary written, directed, and narrated by Werner Herzog about the Chauvet Caves in France. Herzog and his documentary team gained exclusive access to the Chauvet Caves and are some of the few people who have ever been allowed to film inside them, and the result is gorgeous. The Chauvet Caves contain the oldest known cave paintings in the world, and they date back to over 30,000 years ago. This film delves into human history and makes amazing connections between us and our ancient ancestors. It's sometimes easy to forget how similar we are, even now, to our ancient ancestors, and the cave paintings are a really significant reminder of that. One of the experts explained at one point that many of the paintings in the cave were done by the same man, and that man signed his name on the paintings with a handprint. That handprint had a crooked pinky. For some reason, that crooked pinky really stuck with me. Something about the image of a man essentially signing his name the only way he could on his painting really struck me. These people weren't just bones that archaeologists dig up sometimes. 
They were humans just as much as we're humans now. Their hands looked like our hands. Their desires were basically our desires. They wanted to be recognized for their work just as much as we do. And this documentary reminded me how ingrained the human spirit, the human essence is, no matter how many thousands of years pass. Number four. Brazil. Brazil also happens to be one of my all-time favorite movies, but that's beside the point. This is arguably director Terry Gilliam's masterpiece, a dystopian critique of technology, bureaucracy, and commercialism. It stars Jonathan Price as Sam Lowry, a lazy guy who just wants to spend all of his time daydreaming about his imaginary perfect woman, until he sees this woman in real life and risks everything, including his sanity, to find out who she is. This was the first Gilliam film I had ever seen, excluding the brothers Grimm, which doesn't really count, not least because I didn't know it was Gilliam at the time. And I think it was also the first film that made me go, what? At the end. In the best way possible. I recognized, after having watched it the first time, that there were a million details buried in the fabric of the script, the sets, the acting, the editing, that could only be extracted after lots and lots of viewings. It's really, really amazing in that way. I've seen it five or six times by now, and I've even written a couple of papers about it, but I know that I will still be finding new details to amaze me, even after the 50th time I watch it. Gilliam is truly a master of detail. Lastly, but most assuredly not least Lee Mary Poppins. I can't even begin to tell you how many times I've seen this movie. Probably at least a hundred. My whole family is completely and totally in love with this movie and we can all quote pretty much the entire thing. This film has probably had the most impact on me of anything I've ever seen. One of the most exciting things for me about going to London last summer was getting to see the place where this treasure of my childhood took place. I can't tell you how excited I was when I saw St. Paul's Cathedral for the first time. Julie Andrews has always kind of been my ideal ideal of womanhood. Being a woman, kind of to me, means being as much like Julie Andrews as possible. I realize that's extremely weird. But she's Mary Poppins, and she had a huge influence on how I wanted and still want to be as a grown woman. Poised, eloquent, classy, but still steeped in magic and wonder and adventure. Because that's what Mary Poppins is all about, right? Magic and wonder and adventure? It's a mentality that's really always stuck in my mind. Be productive, be responsible, but don't let that stop you from being ridiculous sometimes. Have a tea party on the ceiling, or pop through some chalk pictures on the sidewalk. Anything's possible. So that's it. Thank you for sitting through this 7 million hour video that took me forever to film and probably will take me even longer to edit. I would love to hear what your most significant films are, so if you feel so inclined, either leave a comment or make your own video and link to that down in the comments. And as usual, don't forget to subscribe if you like my face with the words coming out of it, and I will try to have something new for you again next week. Bye!